Hello and welcome to Beard Gamers. My name is Schnell from the uh, Homebrew Magic Podcast crew and MadeUpLabs.com. And today I'm going to be running through the uh, solo version of Bad Bones. And I swear eventually I will make friends to uh, play board games with and drink. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to enjoy, or at least try to enjoy, Bad Bones by myself. And this is a game I've played before, but only ever multiplayer. And having already played through the one one-player game that I actually do own in my board game collection, now I'm going to start checking out the uh, solo play options for some of the games that I've previously enjoyed with others. And let's see if I can enjoy them by myself. Uh, to start things off, though, uh, because it is Beard Gamers, so drinking and board gaming, I will be hopefully also enjoying a chocolate coffee peanut butter porter. This is a nitro beer by Copper State Brewing. Um, I've only ever had a copper uh, b -b 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 peanut butter porter once or twice at a local uh, establishment that has axe throwing. Ah. And I'm always weary of nitro beers because they want you to pour it aggressively to get that. But I always just think it'll all fit in the same glass on a single pour. It never does, and I always make a mess. But uh, Bad Bones is a tower defense game that uh, you are fighting off. Normally, your tower uh, is a four-section high tower, and you are defending a village as well that has five homes in it. Uh, because this is the solo play version, I only have a measly one tall tower peeking out of the snow because it's cold out, it doesn't go that high, and a single home to defend. Uh, the victory conditions for me as a solo player is I need to survive for all ten rounds of the game. Um, for the game to beat me, uh, <laughs> which is a weird statement, but that's how solo play works, uh, the board wins if they enter my tower, thus destroying my tower, or if they get to the home, destroying the home. Uh, so, initial setup is four skeletons from the bag. Each of the skeletons has two sides to it. This helps you uh, figure out which uh, phase of the game you're on, which is kind of handy. And they also have directions left, right, up, down. Well, left, right, down, they're all. There's no up, up ways. But uh, So, initial setup, I match triangle to triangle. The skeleton's going this way. Uh, green diamond to green diamond, that one's going that way. Purple, pink? Not great with colors. The plus sign one, and then the bluish heart thing. Uh, so, first stage of the game, and again, I've got ten rounds to try and hold out. Uh, we are moving our hero. He is currently in the castle. He has to move at least one space. He can never stay where he is. If zombies enter the space where the uh, hero is, they are destroyed instantly. If he enters the space where there are any, I'm going to say zombies and skeletons interchangeably, they are only skeletons. If I enter the undead space, or they enter my hero space, not counting... Mm, no, he can't enter the castle anymore. Once he's out, he's out. Um, if they enter, or he enters them, <laughs> they are destroyed. Any zombie, skeleton, undead, warrior thingies that I can manage to lead off the edge of the board will be added back to my cemetery. Each round the cemetery will refresh with three extra duders. Duders is an uh, easier way than trying to remember which specific brand of undead, so we'll probably go with that route. But uh, three new guys enter each turn, and any of the ones that I manage to lead off the board without destroying will just get added back to the cemetery and thus keep going at, at me. So, leading them off the board without fighting them is great in multiplayer, because in multiplayer you will add them to other players' cemeteries, thus making their struggle even harder. In solo play, it's just about buying time. But, that might not be a bad thing, because buying time will probably help us win by getting to that tenth round. So, uh, first... Since this is settled enough, we'll have some... Oh, I'm going to have all these. I'm going to have all of these in the span of one episode. That's really good. That is... Okay, before I get distracted on beer. Uh, we've already we've finished the uh, initial setup. So, first turn actions. Uh, this guy's probably closest to me. These guys will have... 
an amount of time to get to me. So we're going to move here first. Uh, next, we can see that that dude's coming down. He's going to be heading straight to the, uh, to the village, destroying my one house. This guy will eventually get to the tower. This guy will eventually get to the tower. This guy will get to the tower first. Um, so we've got a little bit, a little bit of time to deal with him. But before we get to that point, we will, uh, on our second action here, we will deploy this wall, which will bounce him here. Once it gets hit, it gets flipped over and can't be used until I retrieve it and replace it. So that will be my place a tile or retrieve a tile action. Next, we flip over to the Zombos. I do like the mechanic of, here's how you keep track of everything. Move them over, and they flip to the black side or the white side, depending on where you are. And that way, especially, you know, if you're under the influence, you can easily keep track of what's moved and what has not moved already. Mmm. Delicious. So, now, we'll be adding three new guys to our cemetery. And then we immediately deploy the new guys. Thankfully, most uh, two of these are in the same bracket. So those guys will be uh, joining up. And if I can get my hero to that spot, he can take out all of them in a single blow. Um, my biggest issue right now will be if the, uh, the bad guys start... Uh, spreading out where I can't get to them because I only have one move each turn to get to them. But uh, that is the end of the first round. We have survived. So now we go back to the beginning. Moving the hero. Uh, we're going to move him there. Killing that guy. Throwing him back in the bag. Um, yeah, that's all we got for there. Um, next as far as moving or placing a tile is concerned. So I've got one wall left to place. I've got two catapults. I've got the dragon, who is a big FU, like emergency hitter. And then the treasure, which is a little bit more strategic of a drop because it lures things to it. Now, in normal gameplay, every single one of these tiles that I use and uh, end up losing will cost me points because they have a star value on one side and a lesser or zero star value on the back. Again, don't really care about that. All I care about is surviving. So, uh, for our placement of tiles, since right now we're, we're dedicated over here, we're going to be dealing with these guys when they come down. This guy's going to be coming over here. So we want to hit here and then start moving down and around. And honestly, I think our biggest issue this corner, I think that'll be fine for a few turns. So, as a precaution and just to have it out there, we are going to move this here so that this gentleman will come down and around and hopefully buy us a little bit more time. Actually, no, I can catch him on the I can catch him on the flip side. Uh, I'm going to still place the wall because not placing probably a bad idea here, um, but. We will... Hmm, we're going to place the catapult. If anything gets past, and I don't manage to get to it in time, the catapult will buy me another turn by uh, launching everything back to the cemetery. That will reset. So, I think that's my best bet, just so that I'm making sure I use my resources. I don't want to be doing nothing, especially when I only have a few turns to go. Uh, so we will go to the next round, yeah, or the next phase. Everything advances. White skeletons. White skeletons. And they want you to pile them up so it's easier. Ugh, so we've got this weird confluence. And then, adding some more guys. There's nothing else in the cemetery, so they will just immediately be added to the board. Yellow going down. Uh... Red coming at me, and a red coming at me. I'm already immediately worried because I was planning on moving away, but probably not the end of the world. Uh, when they get, if they, if I don't move, which I have to move, so if I just move here, 
then I'm encountering a couple of them. I can move through and clear my way out. Uh, this mess is still going to be undealt with. So that'll that'll be fun. That'll be great. We'll see how this goes. Uh, but we did survive another round. So far, so good. So easy. Very easy. Ugh. Yeah, that is delicious. Uh, top of the order. Hero has to move. Hero's going to fall back to this position. Tile placement. Um, like I said, we want to use the tiles. Hmm. Yep, yeah, we're going to drop a catapult. Because that is a defensive measure. We're going to drop a catapult here. We're going to send this guy back. I don't want to use this wall yet until I have to. Um... So that'll be my tile placement. Zombies move. We've killed this one. We did it. They said we couldn't, but we got it done. Uh, these guys move. These guys move. And here is where I'm starting to get a little worried. So this guy flies back there. The catapult is expended. I have to move between these two. Ah. So what I might end up doing is dropping the dragon right away to try and fire breath but just to double check exactly how the dragon is worded and to take a little bit of time to read the stupid rule book because I haven't played this game in a while um, when the dragon steps into a space w or when a skeleton when skeletons step onto a place with the dragon move them to any orthogonally so he, he chases them away he doesn't kill them um, if he gets touched while he's yeah, if he gets touched while he's flipped, then he gets defeated and destroyed. So I could drop him here, sending those guys uh, scattering, but uh, we'll we'll see how this plays out. So um, I can just keep hopping back and forth between the two here, trying to clear out those sections. That might be a good idea, but uh, we will add to the board or add to the skeleton pile. Yellow going here, bluish heart thingy going there, plus sign coming down, and another guy there. Um, so, as you can see, the first two rounds go real quick. It's not much of a threat. It's like, ah, stuff's, stuff's out there, stuff's happening. This game escalates very, very quickly, especially when you are not immediately destroying a bunch of skeletons. Eh, eh. Panicked beer po pouring noises. Um, but that is their deployment. We are going on to turn four. So, boss man gets to move and fight. Again, the catapult's going to buy us some time here. We are still dealing with nothing over here like we should. <sighs> We've got two turns. I think... To stay in the action, the best bet is to go here, destroying these two guys. Getting them back to the bag of oh, bits. And there are a lot of different combinations of colors, directions, headings, whatever you want to call it. Um, whoop. So, we're good there. And I can't place a tile in a spot where I already have a tile, because otherwise dropping uh, the dragon down there might be pretty good, pretty okay. Um, but... Yeah, we've got to do something somewhere. Um, we're pretty well defended, so we are just going to pick this one back up. When we pick it up, it will reset, so we're good. Uh, then, we move on to skeletons' turns. So, these guys get in there, moving, moving... Moving, moving. That is everybody. So, catapult flips, triggers, sends those guys back to Stovacor, I guess. Um, so, that wasn't bad. We're going to get them back. We just bought ourselves time. Uh, everything is a stopgap measure, basically, with uh, the tiles in this one. Which, if I could be dumping these on my opponents, that would be great. We don't have any opponents. We are the opponent that we are effing over ourselves. 
So, with the new ones being added, and the ones that we already bought time upon from, I don't know why we talk like that, probably the beer, um, yeah, that is their redeployment, but we're approaching the halfway point. So, uh, going into, I believe I have to survive till the end of the, the turn five. So, first half down, we've taken out a couple of skeletons, we are approaching the halfway point of our four pack of beer which is uh very important and very fun mm. you should probably savor something like this but i gotta make room for the rest of the can in there gosh that is all foam yeah again nitro beers i don't i don't know what the flavor difference what the you know scientific difference is between a non-nitro or uh, i suppose nitro and i guess flat maybe i don't know what they consider non-nitro regular um i'm sure the aromatic something makes it better i'm pretty sure i would drink this beer completely flat it is it is so tasty i like porters peanut butter porters are great uh the nitro it slows me down a little it won't stop me but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, so we go back to top of the round with our hero's movements. Um, we want to bam, kill those some beaches. Uh, that is all that they can do. And we need to start. So we've got a turn before they get there and a turn before he gets there. So we are going to place this catapult here to send this guy away. That will buy us time to get to this point. And then on the next turn, we'll probably just drop a wall and send that dude north to the Great Nort. Um, yeah, because that way I can't quite get to him, I don't think, fast enough. But uh, flipping over phase three... Section 3 of the turn. I don't know how it's actually denoted. Uh, this guy moves on to this one. Moved. 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 Ah. Moved. Moved. Oh, I forgot about plus sign dude down there. That's not going to be good. Um, but that is all our all of our skeletal movements. Whew, that left side is not looking great. We are going to have to uh, get over there real quick. But again... In the normal game, you've got four towers. You're allowed to take some hits. You've got five of the homes. You're allowed to let some people lose all their memories, their childhood houses, all that crap. Doesn't matter. In this one, we are one and done. But we are not done yet. Pressing on. Um, we have nothing in the uh, cemetery, so we will fix that by adding... I uh, will make sure we get some new fresh ones from the bottom of this stupid bag. So these three will be our new ones. We've got coming in from the bottom left, coming in from the left middle, and coming down from the upper left. Look at that. I knew all my left, rights, ups, downs. <coughs> Whew, scoozy. But going into turn the sixth. Top of the order. Heroic movements. Since we've got a lot of guys coming in here, we're going to have to hop over there, not do anything great. But, oh, this guy. This guy got flipped. He should have been there. We did it right. Um, yeah, because they moved. Then we added new. They didn't move yet. Okay. So we screwed up a little bit. We fixed it, though. No problem. Uh, tiles. Moving and or dropping and or placing. Uh, we want the catapult back because we will be dropping it probably down here to keep these guys clear um, on a later turn. But going to skeleton movement. Aft. Oh, we're really aft down there. Moved, moved. Gets into me, teehee. Oh, this is... Okay. Uh, so we kill these three. That's not horrible. That is a turn's worth of skeletons added to the board being removed from the board. Um, but 
we are a turn away from here being an issue, so we're gonna have to go there. Um, we're also a turn, two turns away from uh, this this home being destroyed and this family being homeless. Um, but let's add some new ones to the board. Again, dig from the bottom so we can really space out our troubles. Make that tomorrow Schnell's problem. That poor son of a bitch. We'll have to deal with these guys. Uh, so again, our, our biggest worry, our biggest concern, we are very much spaced out across the board. So now it is panic mode. Now it is putting out fires as quickly and as bestly as we can. Uh, but to that end, we go into the next turn. So enjoying a little bit more of this porter. Mm. Okay, so as we said, the hero has to move here, otherwise we lose. That's all we got down there. Um, for tile placement, we're going to move over and... Or we're moved to tile placement. And we will go ahead and launch that guy into the stratosphere, the cemetery sphere, whichever layer of orbit that he wants to go to. Uh, and then skeletal movements. He'll move on there. And I think, yeah, moving these bottom up... Oh, that wasn't anticipated. So he'll die too. We are in a bad spot. Um, this right here, I wasn't anticipating. We've just lost the use, or this wall did what it was supposed to do. It redirected, keeping uh, the town safe. And this guy, he's gone forever. But I'm now, I have to go here. This guy gets launched. I'm going to lose my catapult on the next. Oh, we got it. We're going to have to dragon. We are, we're definitely going to have to dragon on the uh, next turn, I think. So. Oh, I think I just lose. I don't want to lose, though. I lost the last time. I always lose these games. Anyway. Uh, so, going into the next phase, we got three more added to the board. Mother. Blue going down. Circle coming over. Triangle to the from the north south, and then plus sign from the left. I gotta learn words. Uh, but we did survive going into the eighth round, so that's. That's a little bit of a thing, I suppose. Uh, starting off the eighth round, we need to send the fighter to save the tower. Um, that's that's all we got. So he's going to move here. He is going to kill those duders. So that is that's all he can do. He's leaving that south wide open, but we can't do anything else. Uh, double checking the rule book real real quick once. Real sconcing quick once. Um, with the Drogon. When a skeleton steps onto a space with the dragon, move them to any orthogonally adjacent spaces from uh, of your choice. Oh, okay, so I can send them wherever. Um, the skeletons are fleeing the dragon, so point them away from it. If the forest is adjacent to the dragon, you can even send skeletons running through the forest to opponent cemeteries. Uh, special effect. During the trap placing retrieval phase, you can make the dragon land on a space with skeletons in it. This is what I this is what I needed to see. Uh, in the basic version of Bad Bones, this is the only trap that can be placed this way. If you do this, immediately flip it over to its damage side. Um, so we're not completely screwed in the southern area here. I can drop the dragon there. Um... We're mostly screwed. We're mostly screwed elsewhere. So, yeah, that's great. But here, let's figure it out. Uh, moving to the tile retrieval tile placement. I'm going to lose this catapult. It's okay. It did It did job. It did do an okay job. Um, so, on the next, let's play out the skeletal movement phase and see if there's any greatness we can avoid. Uh, so this get, these two are coming here, which means that's where the hero has to go. 
From there, he can go there, and if I just keep circling the tower, maybe maybe if I circle the tower enough, I can buy enough time. Because I've only got to survive, I think, three more three more actions. And I'll double check the actual rules when we get to that point. But uh, for right now, they're going to they're gonna come here and destroy my catapult. I need to send the dragon to this space. I think sending this guy up and away. Actually, if, I'll just send him back to the forest. If I send him back to the forest, he goes back to my cemetery and he comes back later. But that's a couple of turns later, and we don't care about a couple of turns. We have like two or three based on how the math actually plays out. So, um, what we're going to do for tile placement is sending the Drogon. Whichever side. That's the, that's the damage side. Um, we're going to send this guy scared and away back that way. Moving to... Zambo skeletal movement. And seriously, skeletons, I believe, technically would be considered a subset of zombies. They're zombies minus the flesh. And I get it that zombies are reanimated corpses, but a skeleton is a decent chunk of a corpse as well. And they're both animated. So I get that it's 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 not tech apples and oranges are both fruit but they're not interchangeable I get that I really do but I'm gonna keep saying zombies because zombies are awesome there's a ton of movies about them you should watch all of them uh, and there's that sweet sweet song that's been playing quietly in the back of my brain since I started recording this crap <clears throat> so. We've placed. We're moving. This one goes to the cemetery. This one comes over here. This one comes over here. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I think that. I think that f's us. I think we lose there. So there. And there. And there. And there. Und dead. Woo! We did it. Said we couldn't, but we did it. Um. We're going to take a quick half second. We're going to read the rules as far as to win, to lose, to whatever. Um, normally, again, the game goes until somebody else just screws up. I am the somebody else in this instance. So, according to this, you win the game. You win the game if your tower and house are still intact at the end of 10 complete rounds of play. So we started at 1, and then we moved it at the end of the round. So one round, yeah, so we are approaching, we are in round eighth, the eighth. This peanut butter, <laughs> this peanut butter porter is delicious. So delicious that we're going to chug a third one. Um, so we are, we need to survive two more rounds of movement. I don't believe that I can, but I'm going to do my best. Yeah, again, so much foam, so much waiting. So, side note, while I wait for this, um, as a amateur beer drinker, I would say, in the truest sense, in that amateur uh, includes the Latin prefix for the word to love, amo, amare. Um, it's some, an amateur. Forgot to move that guy. An amateur is somebody who do, does something because they love it. I enjoy drinking beer. Uh, beer... It, arguably one of the greatest inventions in history because, uh, well, okay, in a roundabout way, because beer helped people through times where waterborne diseases were killing people. And people who drank beer lived healthier lives. They didn't get those diseases. It's not because it was beer. It's because it was boiled water. Boiling is part of the process. But regardless... Is one of those fun, happy accidents where you could get drunk and also not get horrible parasites and diseases. But anyway, as an amateur, as not a professional, uh, I've drunk a lot of different beers just because I like it. It's fun. It's weird. I get to try things and I get a little bit of a buzz while I do it because my brain's slowly uh, losing brain cells and that makes me happy because ignorance is bliss. So it's all it's all one big circle. But anyway, uh, I went to uh, Ireland this past summer and. Ordering a Guinness there is a half hour ordeal because they do this part of it apparently correctly, which I've never done. If I order a Guinness at a bar, they will pour it 
with the foam. They will wait for the foam to recede to an appropriate amount before refilling my beer. And every single Guinness I ordered, uh, the first few was, I will enjoy this. I will uh, do this at a leisurely pace. I will pace myself, as you will. And I just had to wait so long that they focus on quality over quantity. I'm more of a quantity man myself. My board game collection speaks to that volume. Ha <laughs> ha, Qua quantity, quantity joke. You love to see them. But anyway, uh, so as I digress, waiting for the foam to, to uh, go, uh, we're going to add three more skeletons, not zombies, to our board here. We have the one that we sent away. I'm buying time because I'm losing. That's honestly what it is. Uh, so we've got green coming down. Heart coming over. Plus being added to the board. <laughs> and a uh, diamond? It's all lucky charm shapes. Uh, but we've survived to the end of round nine. Uh, we need to survive more. We could really try that. So going to the top of the round, we've got our hero to go. The hero's too far to save us. He can't He can't get to where he needs to go. Uh, I'm not out of the game yet because I just remember the treasure. So, here's what we're going to do. Hero movement. He's going to go here and he's going to kill these guys. That is what we had to do. Um, when they moved on, by the way, and I was on my little tirade digression thing, this got destroyed. This is gone now. It's out of the game for error. Uh, this will be out of the game as soon as something crosses it while it's over. Well, it's flipped over. And then uh, catapult, also useless. But in the meantime, the hero moves. We might be out of the... We might be okay. The hero moves. We go to the tile placement. We're going to add the treasure to the board. When we put the treasure here, it will... And I will pull out the big book of words. And officially... So, again, the treasure is something that... You don't want to use it in a multiplayer game unless you absolutely have to because it's worth so many points. We do not give a shit about points. We care about survival. And this is our panicked survival moment. When the treasure is placed, all skeletons orthogonally adjacent immediately turn towards it. Similarly, when moving the skeletons, if they end their movement on a space orthogonally... So I don't care about the, the rest of that word. When it's placed, this guy right here gets turned facing it. So he is no longer going to uh, attack my castle. He's going to steal my treasure. I don't deserve to have this treasure anymore because I did not budget properly, but that does not matter because, again, I've got two turns left to survive, two turns left to try and win this one. Uh, so we've placed our treasure here. He immediately turns and goes, I want that treasure. Um, going to the skeletal movement phase. We added the board. We added the board. So, uh, moved over. He sees the treasure, too. Moved over. Moved over. Over. He moves. And I believe doesn't... Yeah, I think he still cares about the... Okay, back back to the rule book real once. Real quick. Real quick once. I don't know why that's such a Wisconsin thing of the... Real, real quick once. Similarly... When moving the skeletons, if they end their movement on a space orthogonally adjacent to treasure, they turn toward the treasure. The allure of treasure outweighs any reorientation arrows. That's what we needed to check on this part. So, uh, this guy right here, he cares more about treasure than he does about killing me and taking me out of the game. Um, but we did flip him because he moved from here to here. Uh, this thing moves here, destroys the wall. He will go up, he will go down, he will go there, he will go there, he will go there. Um, so we've reached a new problem, but not the end of the game, which is important. The new problem is this guy, which I ha I'll have to go back and uh, deal with. But this dude steals our treasure, and then uh, unfortunately, back to the rule book once more to find out what happens when he steals the treasure. Does he just continue off into the woods? Um, if at least one of them is on the space with the treasure, the treasure is stolen and removed from the game. The thieving skeletons remain on the board without being reoriented. Reorientated. Even if a reorientation arrow became visible when the treasure is removed. So, I think, 
I think we pulled out a victory here. I don't want to jinx it because I think there's some racial overtones to that expression. But um, let's see what happens. So we've moved all the things. We're going to add three new gender neutral duders. Uh, we've got heart coming down, triangle coming over, circle coming over. End of round. So, we've got this last round to go. I think we're okay, because there's only one movement, and only one dude are facing my thing, and I think I got him. Um, hero movement. He has to go over here to kill this threat. Threat gone. That's what we did. Um, for tile, move, replace, what hair. Um, at this point, we're going to save our dragon. Add him back to our horde. Hordeless horde, because we lost the gold. Because we've lost those tiles thus far. We'll put, we'll put casually. In the arms of the angels. So, casualties are up there. In the arms of the angels. Um, going to our final skeletal movements. He moves over and dies. He moves over, he moves over, uh, he moves over, he moves over, he moves over, he moves up, he passes like ships in the night, he heads back to the cemeter, he is a turn away from killing us, and that is our last skeletal movement of the round. Ugh, if I didn't have a mustache, I wouldn't have to make that noise every time I drink. But um, does it should not matter. But we will go ahead and we will add three more to our cemetery. Uh, diamond coming down. Plus sign coming down. Circle coming over. Circle from the other way. Uh, then we go to scoring. We go to the end. We've survived. We did it. That was close. I was I was a turn away. Well, okay. So, I had to move this guy down. He would have killed him. But honestly, that was that was pretty close. I I feel good about this win. It was I've exhausted enough. It was I've exhausted. Uh, I ha I had thoughts and then they just go away. But um we had to expend the use of our treasure. It is a one and done effect in the game. It's very useful, but I think it, it had to be done because I don't I didn't see any other way to do it. We did lose a catapult, we did lose a wall. We saved the dragon, which does not matter, because again, we don't count points, we count survival. Whew! I'm gonna finish my last what are we on? Uh three beers in a half hour. Nothing to write home about, but this is good peanut butter porter. If you're ever in the copper state, it's a Wisconsin beer. It has the Wisconsin Wisconsin logo. The Wisconsin logo, sometimes called the map of Wisconsin, the ultimate logo, um, and some sort of uh, coppery nugget over the top. But uh, that was Bad Bones as the solo playthrough. I managed to survive, and I'm very thrilled about that. Um, honestly, this was kind of fun. I didn't, I didn't mind the... Uh, the one and done aspect of losing because uh with the timer i think 10 rounds is a good amount of time for this one and again if you're playing multiplayer every single skeleton that you send off the board or catapult off into oblivion will go to another player cemetery and add to the problems that they have to deal with they will have four castle tower sections and five homes of which to be saved or destroyed but each destroyed, or each non-destroyed one, will give you uh, three victory points at the end of the game. So that really helps. And game normally goes until somebody screws up badly enough that either all their tower sections or all of their homes are destroyed. And I think if your home is destroyed, maybe board games aren't on the top of your priority list. But anyway, uh, I do have to say at the end of this, as always, thank you so much for watching, for sitting here, watching me get drunk playing a board game. And... Uh, if you, if you are so inclined, like and subscribe, throw a comment on this video or any of the other videos that me and my idiot friends put together. 
I would really appreciate some positive feedback or any feedback really. Um, but hit the like button. It costs you nothing and it gives me the good brain chemicals. And honestly, it's one of those, like, if I can get more of the good brain chemicals, I won't feel the way I normally feel. But uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Beardgamers.com <laughs> <laughs> I like it.